Hello! Hello! Every five minutes on social media, just lately, I'm seeing these magazine articles right. from people telling the story of how much, the millions that they saved by moving out of a house and onto a boat. Millions? Millions! But is it true? Well, you I know, hope I mean, not. the cost of living crisis and rocketing inflation and just prices going up, that's what inflation means, isn't it? I think so, yeah. It's not surprising that a lot of people are looking for ways to save money and a cheaper way of living. Yeah. But is living on a boat really cheaper than living in a house? Well, in last week's vlog, because we used to live on a narrow boat, we compared how much it would be to live on a narrow boat now than it was two years ago when we last did a video like this. Before we reveal all... No, you're not taking <laughs> my clothes off. <laughs> it would make a change. We want to point out that all the prices and costings that we're quoting today are based on prices as they are at the moment when we recorded this video. So things like energy prices, gas and electric might go up a little bit more, but things a little like, bit. certain things like petrol might come down a little bit. The better do. So if you're watching this in September, you might need to get a bit more overtime in. The other thing is we're not including the cost of a house or a boat itself, because some people might buy them outright, some people might get loans or mortgages or even rent. So we're not including that. This video is just about the actual cost of living on a boat for us compared with a house. Some things might not be comparable from a house to a boat. For example, the first thing on the boat was servicing and maintenance, which cost us... £868. Now, we don't have servicing and maintenance in a house, but what we do have is decorating costs, and we also have a bit of maintenance for if things go wrong, if we need to replace a bit of guttering or a door or yeah. something like that. So we've budgeted £750 a year. Now, that would decorate one room. It would well fix a little bit of a whoopsie if we have one but whoopsie not, yeah but nothing too major <laughs> the other way that you could save money in the house is decorate naked i did that when we decorated this house he did and it does we I, I, the amount of money it saved us was enough to pay for therapy for the neighbors who saw me through the window <laughs> The next thing on the boating list was blacking and anodes, yeah. which I couldn't say last week. Uh, and there's also ano anoids, and you've got ano, ano, I can't say you it. can't say it. Why can't I say ano, ano, anodes? Anodes, it's anodes. Blacking and anodes on the boat last time cost us. 332 pounds. Now obviously that's not an expense we've got in the house. So that's a big fat zero. Yoo-hoo. The next thing on the boating list was batteries which used to cost us £545 a year because we replace them every four years. Yes. Now again, in a house, we don't need batteries. We haven't got a, any kind of solar setup that needs batteries. We've just got electricity. Yes. So we've got a big fat zero for batteries, but don't worry, Yay! we are budgeting for electric. On the boats, we had to pay for a license from the Canal and River Trust. And that would have cost us this year on the boat. £1,109. Now, not being anywhere near a canal up here in the Highlands of Scotland, we don't have to pay that anymore, but we do have to pay council tax. Oh. Now, in Scotland, the council tax also includes the water rates and sewerage and drain and it stuff, does. which costs us £1,439 a year, so that's a little bit more Ooh, than the we're CRT at a loss license. Here. We're at a loss on that, that one. That includes the water, though. But then again, the CRT licence included water, it didn't did. it? On the boat, we had to have insurance, which cost us... £598. That still is a bit... Isn't it? A lot. That was because of the filming equipment and yeah. the rebuild cost of the boat, if anything happened to it. Now, of course, we have to have house insurance in a house. And weirdly, it's a lot less. For us, in our little... I mean, it is a little house up here in the Highlands, in the middle of nowhere. It's £193 a year. That's There's amazing. Actually, quite a big saving. Yeah, but we're not driving our house down a canal with a load of other boaters crashing into us, are we? That's true. One of the biggest expenses on the boat was diesel. We used it for heating and we also used it for propulsion, moving the boat. Now, based on this year's prices, as an average, it would have cost us... £1,680. Oh, it still makes my leg ache when I think about that. 
Now, we don't have diesel here at the house. No. We heat the house using gas. We do. And we don't have to propulsion. <laughs> propulsion <laughs> the house. We don't have to move it. So we don't have the cost of diesel. Ah, you're saying, but you've got the Jeep. Well, don't worry, we're costing the Jeep separately. So that will come. But we haven't got the cost of diesel. Another thing we don't have in the house is the cost of coal, which we used to heat the boat using the stove. Now, based on this year's prices, that would have cost us... £1,348. <laughs> That's a lot of coal. It was like 1,800 kilos of coal, wasn't it, over a year? Now, we don't use coal in the house. We have got a wood-burning stove, and we cut our own logs when we want yeah. to use that. But we do have electric, so we're going to swap the cost of coal for the cost of electric. Right. Now, again, don't forget electric prices have been going up recently, but based on today's prices, we'll be paying £2,003 for this year based on our electric costs. We also used gas on the boat. We had 13 kilo gas bottles, which we used really only mainly for cooking, wasn't it? Yes, that's all it was for. Got to be careful how you say for cooking. <laughs> and what? <laughs> we use gas in the house, but we use it for heating. Yeah. And that would cost us, again, at today's prices, £1,303 a year, compared with... 170 On the boat. <laughs> so oh, my. Oh, it's my. It's starting to sway the other way now, isn't it? <laughs> On the boat, we had a composting separating toilet. Yes. Which used to cost us... 24 quid. Which was just coconut, quite, was the soil, yeah. wasn't it? And some bleaching tablets and bags, that was it, wasn't yeah. it? Now... We're in a house and we've got a flushing toilet, which was a it's like a luxury it after a, all. It were a revelation. <laughs> after all those years on a boat. Uh, and because the water is included in the cost of our council tax yeah. and the bleach and toilet cleaners that we use comes under groceries now, so it's nothing for us. Every four years, we would have had to have had the boat examined by a boat safety scheme examiner. BSS. That's it. And that would, well, we used to put away 58 quid a year, and then every four years that would pay for the boat safety scheme yeah. certificate. Now, obviously, we don't need that here, so again, that's a big fat zero for the house. On the boats, we had a budget for groceries, which was £85 a week. So for the year, that was £4,524. Now, we've kept the exact same budget for yeah. the house. So it's still £85 a week, £4,524. And you might be saying, oh, well, yeah, costs have gone up because you've got Ollie now. But we're not comparing Ollie because we didn't have Ollie on the boat. So we're only comparing like for like costs. Yes. So there's no difference there. Next up is the internet and our mobile phones. On the boat, we had a mobile phone each and we had a SIM card for unlimited data through a router on the boat for our Wi-Fi. Yes. And we used to pay... £525. A year for that. Yeah. Now, we actually got a better deal with our broadband supplier with the house, with the mobiles included, and we only pay £420 a year all in for that. When we had the boat... We were moving all the time, so it was easy to get to places. Yeah. Not very quickly, but we could get to places when we wanted to. Sometimes we needed to visit family or friends or go to a hospital, doctor's, dentist appointment or go pick something up. So we had to use a train or a bus or a taxi. And on the boat, that would have cost us... £258. Which is not that bad. Now, we've got the house and we've actually got a car now. We've got a Jeep, as you probably know if you watch us. So what I've done is used the transport costs as the Jeep costs. Right. So I've rolled the petrol, the tax, the insurance, the MOT, the servicing and maintenance right. for the Jeep, all the costs of the Jeep into one number, which is £1,330 a year. <laughs> so that's a lot more than it would have cost us. But then again, we haven't got the cost of diesel, which we had on the boat, which was about that anyway. Yeah. So it does kind of even that out, doesn't yes. it? Yes. On the boat, we had a TV licence because we like to watch the TV. We, we watch the BBC do. and things. And that used to cost us... £159. Up here in Scotland, it's exactly the same, £159. Things always go wrong when you least expect it. So we had an emergency savings fund on the boat, which was... £1,000. And we've got the same here because, I don't know, things could fall off the roof. But well, better not. When we've built the roof... <laughs> things might fall off it. So we have exactly the same, £1,000 in emergency savings. It's actually on a credit card because we haven't got the cash at the moment. But we've got £1,000 really put aside for in case anything goes wrong. 
And finally, our pocket money. I like this bit. I never got any. We still don't. We allowed ourselves £30 a week as an allowance for things like going out to the pub or to take away or yes. fish and chips and things like that. I know it doesn't sound a lot, but we don't earn a lot of money. People think we earn all this money from YouTube and we, we don't. And because of the costs going up, we limited ourselves to £30 a week, which for the year totals £1,560. And we've kept exactly that same allowance here in the house. So £1,560 a year. He's kept it. I don't see it. Yeah, which is mainly on Lego. To be honest. <laughs> <laughs> we don't go out to cafes or to the pub because there are no cafes and pubs here. So we just buy Lego off Amazon. So, in conclusion, I can't wait for this. It's like opening the envelope at the Oscars, isn't it? To see who's <laughs> won. It would cost us to live on our narrowboat in 2023. I ain't got the envelope. 14,758. It costs us to live in the house. Are you ready for this? I am. 14,000. £681 Ooh, a year. We a win. Saving of £77. It's not a lot, but it's there. Can I buy something with that? And I think for us, that goes to prove that you don't always save money by living on a narrowboat. No. I think the point of this video that we're trying to get across is not to believe all the hype you read in these magazines about saving money. Because a lot of the time it's more than just about saving money. Yes. When you move from a house onto a narrowboat, not only do you have to give up probably 90% of your possessions, which is what we did, but your lifestyle changes. It's all right thinking that you've got all these great outdoors to explore and this beautiful scenery, but your actual living conditions are a lot more cramped than they would be in a house, unless you're moving from, I don't know, a half a bedroom studio flat, <laughs> which probably is better. But that's the point of this video. Everybody's circumstances are totally different. So the one size fits all approach of moving from a house to a boat is gonna be cheaper and a better quality of life might be true in some circumstances, but it's not gonna be true every single time. As That's we've right. proved, we've moved from a boat to a house. We've done it the other way around, and it's actually cheaper for us, albeit by a fraction, to live in a house. But I think that's the important point, is that our story books the trend of how the media like to portray boat life. Yes. So if we were to give you any advice, the first piece of advice is don't take our story as gospel because everybody's circumstances are different, isn't it? That's right. Secondly, research, research, research. We spent years researching living on a boat before we did it properly. We did it once and it failed yeah. back in 2004. And that's why we did it properly the second time. And I think the third piece of advice is to go and do it before you commit to it. Don't just give everything up and buy a boat and move on it without trying it first. For a few reasons. One, you're gonna find it difficult to get all your possessions back again if you decide you don't like it. And that can be more stressful than the reason that caused you to do it in the first place. Exactly. We hope you found this useful. I did. If you want to know more about narrowboat costs and how they've changed over the last couple of years, watch last week's vlog. I think there's a link somewhere on screen or it's in, probably in the up description. There. Uh, but if you've enjoyed this vlog, and we hope you have, and you like our content and want to watch more, subscribe to our channel. Give this video a thumbs up if you'd be so kind. And if you hit the notification bell, then YouTube will tell you every time we release a new video. Although it's good to have a time and date in your head. It is. Fridays, four o'clock. Usually when we release them. Although we do release shorts and other bits and pieces. Yeah, there. through the week. If you'd like to help support the channel and keep us and the dogs and the chickens and the bees and the other animals that might be on the way in food, <gasps> then there's a link above Sean's head which will take you to Patreon. Uh, if not there, it's in the video description. You can get exclusive content that you don't see on the videos. <laughs> Rubbish. <laughs> it's not rubbish. You've got to stop saying rubbish. that. Uh, we'll be back next week. Till then, take care of yourself. Bye bye. Ta ra. Roddy, 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 I'm, I'm knackered. Oh, we're already recording. Oh, We've been recording for the last two hours. You know how you have like a favourite jumper? Jumper, but I think it's my favourite jumper because I'm slowly changing colour to match it. If you look at my hair, it's slowly matching the colour of my jumper. We've had about 10 years that jumper, I think. It's ready for a wash. It's full of life, isn't it, this jumper? Got to be careful with Sean today, he's hurt his back. Let's what? find out how Sean hurt his back. Was it A, <laughs> tomfoolery with a guinea pig? <laughs> Was it B, horseplay with an angry hamster? Oh! 
or was it C, some shady shenanigans with a short-sighted sheep? Send your answers on a postcard to we all know he did it straining to have a poo. I don't even know what we're talking about today. He's looked at... Oh, we've, I've been sat here since half past 11. It's right. now 20 to 5. I hope you know we're doing this instead of me cooking lunch and I'm hangry. Last week... I can't remember. I've forgotten. But gas... Uh, pep, yeah, I, I, he's putting me off because he's making a noise. Uh, forgot. Did I say I said that, didn't I? I think you did. And that cost us... 300 and something. <laughs> Yay, Sean forgot one. <laughs> Three, two, one. 545. <laughs> Three, two, one. 545. All right. Uh, on the boat, it would have cost us. I can't remember. It would have cost us this year. 14,700 and something. <laughs> I knew you'd forget. Can you do an impression of Phyllis Pierce? Vilcha. He forgot now. Ah! We had. Uh, it definitely wasn't syphilis. Things always go wrong when you least expect it. They do. You followed through the other day, didn't you? No, I did. Where, where did that come from? It came from Uranus. Oh! Not the planet. Wow, that was quite good, that. It was.